Brother Todd Bennett of ShemaYisrael.net. Shalom! Today is day 11 of month 3 on the Creator's calendar, also known as June 11th, 2022, on the Roman calendar. Just in case you happen to notice an unusually high number of rainbow flags and symbols being displayed, it has nothing to do with remembering the Creator and His judgment for the defilement of His creation. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You see, those are not normal rainbows displaying the seven colors of the visible light spectrum that was built into creation. They do not accurately portray the seven color rainbow that was assigned for the promise that Yahweh would not judge the planet again by water, Genesis 9.13. No, these rainbows only have six colors. They are actually a perversion of Yahuwah's sign. Now we know that the number six is the number of man, because man was created on day six. It appears that 6,000 years is the limit on how long Yahuwah will strive with man, since 120 jubilee years amounts to 6,000 years, and 1,000 years is like a day in the sight of Yahuwah. See Genesis 3, 6, 3, and Psalms 94. We all know the story of Noah's flood, and it resulted because fallen angels defiled the flesh of man and the special creation that was made in the image of Elohim. It was an incredible age where we get much of our mythology from, particularly Atlantis and, lowercase, the gods. See Genesis 6, 4. Yahuwah judged the earth because all flesh was corrupted, save eight individuals, Noah and his family. Genesis 6, 12. The world was given plenty of notice and ample time to repent. Estimates run from 50 to 75 years as the time that it took Noah to build the ark. When judgment finally came, it was swift. Those who were not set apart and protected were swept away by the waters. Yahuwah saved eight obedient beings from the entire planet. Now that's what I call a remnant. When the waters receded, Yahuwah provided a visible sign in the form of the rainbow. It was both a promise and a remembrance. And Elohim said, This is a sign of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between Elohim and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And Elohim said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Genesis 9, 12-17 Yahuwah did not say that he would never again judge the world. He simply promised that he would not judge all flesh by water again. In fact, there is a tradition that Adam knew that there would be two judgments. The tradition is recorded in Josephus. The, they, excuse me, the children of Seth also were the inventors of that peculiar sort of wisdom which is concerned with the heavenly bodies and their order, and that their inventions might not be lost before they were sufficiently known upon Adam's prediction that the world was to be destroyed at one time by the force of fire and at another time by the violence and quantity of water. They made two pillars, the one of brick, the other of stone. They inscribed their discoveries on them both, that in case the pillar of brick should be destroyed by the flood, the pillar of stone might remain and exhibit those discoveries to mankind, and also inform them that there was another pillar of brick erected by them. Now this remains in the land of Sarad, Egypt, to this day, Flavius Josephus Antiquus of the Jews, one 0.2.3 Translation William Whiston The tradition is also recorded in the Latin text of the life of Adam and Eve a late antique version of the Jewish apocalypse of Moshe that was originally composed in the first century CE On account of your transgression our Lord will bring upon your race the anger of his judgment first by water the second time by fire by these two will the Lord judge the whole human race but hearken unto me my children Make ye then tables of stone and others of clay and write on them all my life and your fathers that ye have heard and seen from us. If by water the Lord judge our race, the tables of clay will be dissolved and the tables of stone will remain. But if by fire the tables of stone will be broken up and the tables of clay will be baked hard. And it says trans R.H. Charles. The text of 1 Enoch 13 specifically attributes the final judgment by fire to the watchers and their offspring. Remember that the demons are the disembodied offspring of the fallen ones. I believe that they are finding new habitations and they are cloaked within these movements and behind the six-colored rainbow. Finally, Peter confirms that belief in words that I believe are specifically written for our days. 
knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last day, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they will willfully forget that by the word of Elohim the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with Yahuwah one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Yahuwah is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahuwah will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. 2 Peter 3, 3-10 well, there are plenty of scoffers, and they clearly are not concerned about a future judgment by fire. What you see occurring before our eyes is actually a continuation of the rebellion that occurred before the flood. The notion that you can redefine your sexuality or transition from one sex to another through drugs and butchery under a surgeon's knife is a direct affront to the order of the universe. It is the creation, and creation insulting the, the creator by claiming some sort of manufacturing defect when, in fact, it is user error. To then assert pride over such defiance is sheer folly. I produced a video several years ago addressing this issue titled, Pride Goes Before the Fall. I think you would find it interesting. Indeed, pride, described as a proud look, is one of the seven things that Yahuwah hates and describes as an abomination. These six things Yahuwah hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Of course, it would be argued that most of these abominations exist within the LGBTQ movement. I find it interesting that it mentions six things that are hated, followed by seven that are on abomination. That is what we are dealing with here, the difference between six colors and seven colors. You might also notice something that can be applied to abortion. There is no better description of abortion than the shedding of innocent blood. Of course, the wicked seek to shed the blood of the innocents because it empowers evil. This traces all the way back to the worship of Moloch and Chesmosh and beyond. I'm afraid that the possible reversal of the Roe vs. Wade is too late to cancel the incredible judgment coming upon America for the shedding of innocent blood, which is a hoax, by the way. That's a reader's note. The leaked draft decision does not outlaw abortion. It simply defers to the states. So what we will see is further polarization, division, and separation as America continues to fracture and disintegrate. Well, if the evil ones cannot kill a child before birth, they will inundate it with lies to draw the innocent one away from the order established by Elohim. It is not only happening in the public schools. It, also, it is also in the churches. I have seen footage of drag queens giving Sunday school lessons to little children while the pastor and parents watch with approval. We need to pray for the children who are being killed, lied to, deceived, abducted, injected, and molested. Child trafficking is exploding and child exploitation and pedophilia is rampant. It is, in reader's note, that is never, it's always been, it's just getting worse. I remember when NAMBLA, the National American Man-Boy Love Association, came into the forefront years ago, and most people were shocked by its existence. Who would ever imagine that we would reach this present state of social depravity? So goes the way of the nations. There is nothing new under the sun, and it really should be no surprise, because these abominations are being empowered by dark spiritual forces. So despite the clear scriptural warnings, corporations, organizations, municipalities, individuals, and even churches will be waving their six color flags of rebellion throughout the month of June. In doing so, they are essentially giving the creator the middle finger. Well, that's never a good plan. It is clear that fire is coming to destroy all of this sin because there are certain stains that water just cannot cling. Christians talk a lot about baptism by fire, but they don't always know what that means. While water washes, Fire destroys and purifies. There will come a time when Yahushua will assert his rightful position. He will baptize this entire planet by fire and we will see who and what remains. I can assure you that no six-colored flag or banner will make it through that baptism, nor will any churches that display them. The entire month of June has been designated as Pride Month. 
It is no coincidence that the sixth month of the Roman calendar is the month chosen to defy the Creator. For those of you familiar with the Hebrew scriptures, you can see that within the first seven words of the scriptures, the Aleph Ta is found two times, word four and word six. Of course, the Aleph Ta is the word that represents the Messiah. If we consider this as a picture of time, we see the appearance of the Messiah leading up to the fourth millennium and the sixth millennium. Also, the first word in the scriptures is Beershit, which is the word for covenant, Brit, surrounding the word fire, Esh, so fire as at the center of the covenant from the beginning. Remember the former things of old, for I am Elohim and there is no other. I am Elohim and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Those celebrating Pride Month would do well to remember the former things of old before it is too late. Instead of transitioning their sexual identity, they should be transitioning from lawlessness to obedience. That is a process known as repentance. Instead of surgically altering their genitals, they should allow Yahuwah to circumcise their hearts. I hear a lot of Christians talk about love, but are you really loving someone by condoning sin and accepting it? Is it love to watch someone walk straight into the fire without warning them, even if it offends them? The problem is that most of them don't even know what love is. Yahushua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. You express your love through obedience, and we should be warning these people that pride, along with their conduct, will lead them to judgment. The Proverbs have many additional warnings about pride. One of them instructs that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. Haughty refers to something heightened. It seeks to elevate itself. It is the opposite of humility. Yahushua first came as a humble, suffering servant. He will return as a conquering king. He actually described the days of his coming as similar to the days of Noah and the days of Lot. The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will also be the days of the Son of Man, in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Luke 17, 22 through 29. It is no coincidence that he included a reference to the destruction of Sodom. That is where we drive the word sodomy, which is defined as any various forms of sexual act regarded as perverted or unnatural. Well, there you have it. People can try to ignore the reality of Yahuwah and their own existence. They can pretend that their sins are normal and even try to change things to suit their feelings and desires. But Yahuwah does not change and his words are immutable. Their efforts are all vanity. Therefore, when we see the profound rainbow and corresponding pride slogan, we should be reminded of Yahushua's words, his judgment, and the need to repent. It's easy to focus on all the negative and get overwhelmed when you see all the evil in the world. These are not times to despair. We have hope that transcends beyond judgment and turns into joy. So while, so, while much of the world is focusing on pride, I suggest that the per, people of Elohim focus on humility and being set apart. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom, Proverbs 11, 2. We definitely all need wisdom for the days ahead. May we be counted among the wise virgins, virgins who find their way to the wedding feast, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Matthew 25, Baraka, Todd.